let me know when you're gonna start and I will start recording so that everybody can uh, review our uh, meeting yeah, okay Did, can, can you see me can you see my chat box yes okay yeah yeah okay so please let me know the number for example if we begin with the number 10 so just let me know the number 10 and i will post the in here uh, the summary for the content of let's uh, workshop number 10. okay uh, yeah sure um we'll, we'll start with uh number 11. 11 okay now that okay Okay, I just typed into the chat box that you will begin with number 11. Right, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So. So let's uh, let's a Safago engineer just one minute to read the summary and we can we can begin. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Howa, uh, I'd yeah, like yeah. to rem remind that uh, once we start, uh, I will have this one uh, on record so that we can play it back uh, for their review, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Great, yeah, great, thank you. Hi, good morning. Yes, Mr. Tai. Last time it was our Professor Dean was uh, taking the lead and he will continue to take the lead. He's our professor for the day. <laughs> Uh, Darius, we uh, we've sent the um, the training workshop files uh, around for everybody, right? Right, right. Through my card, that's right. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And um, everybody has a copy of Water Gems that they're able to to run to follow along. I believe so. Right. Uh, please confirm that one, uh, Doctor Hawa or uh, Mr. Tai. Yeah, but all materials have been uh, forwarded and uh, prepared by my CAD and translated it to uh, Vietnamese language as well. Great. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, so uh, Dr. Howa is having a problem uh, connecting back to our team. So I am asking uh, Mr. Tai, uh, I'll please uh, no, uh, let me have this one first on record. And uh, officially, we uh, from Bentley team, we say thank you for allowing us to have this time uh, of workshop. Uh, like as before, uh, our professor for the entire technical session will be uh, Mr. Dean uh, from Australia. My name is Darius, uh, based in the Philippines, managing the sales. And with that, um, uh, Mr. Tai, could you please make the intro? I think we will be starting uh, module number 11 and then pass it to Mr. Dean, okay? Again, good morning, everybody. Chị dịch chưa? Okay. Dạ chào các anh chị uh, Savako ạ. Hello. Hello mọi oh, người welcome nghe không được. Back Mr. Uh, Mam uh, Hoa. Yeah, yeah. Hoa. Yeah, I'm Thank sorry. I, I, I had a little bit trouble with my connection. So I am back again. Uh, kính chào các anh chị um, uh, Savako. Bạn uh, Darius Opilat của Benly vừa giới thiệu chương trình của ngày hôm nay chúng ta sẽ học về một vài những tính năng nâng cao của chương trình phần mềm quốc tế trên dành riêng cho việc ở mô hình hóa mạng phân phối nước người phụ trách về mặt kỹ thuật lần này là như lần khóa học lần trước là bạn Din đến từ Australia và bài đầu tiên mà chúng ta bắt đầu ngày hôm nay là bài số 11 như tôi đã Uh, đưa nội dung vào trong cái chat box Thì một lần nữa xin uh, chào các anh chị Và xin phép được uh, cho bạn Bin bắt đầu ạ Nếu không có vấn đề gì khác ạ uh, Thêm nữa có những vấn đề gì nâng cao đấy, mong các anh chị ghi lại rồi chúng ta có thể tiếp tục trao đổi bằng email sau cái khóa học 2 ngày này. Và chúng ta vẫn có thể tiếp tục nhận được tư vấn cũng như là là, là giải thích bằng email của bạn Din cũng như các bạn khác trong nhóm Twitter của Mandy. Dạ, nếu không có ai à, không ai có ý kiến gì khác hoặc là câu hỏi gì khác thì xin chúng ta để cho bạn Din bắt đầu ạ. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Dean. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we are ready. Let's let's go. Yeah. Okay, let's excellent. Yeah. <coughs> um, I'll just go ahead and share my screen here. Um, <coughs> okay, so um, uh, as mentioned, we're going to start with workshop 11. Uh, um, and um, th this workshop's called um, Darwin Calibrator. So just before I talk about it, I'll just go ahead and open it up. So you need to find um, wherever it is that you have stored the um, training materials. So um, wherever you have the, the folder called Water Distribution Design and Analysis Starter, um, that's the one you'll need to... To, to open uh, the, the folder and then in the starter folder you'll find the Darwin Calibrator um, WTG water gems file that you need to open up so uh, just just as everybody's opening that up um, basically what, what we're going to do here is we're going to um, create some groups uh, groups of pipes and then um, groups of junctions and um, and then we're going to go uh, and um, and see what happens when we use different calibration methods. So um, we're going to change the roughness, and, and then we're going to change the demands as well, and and do both at the same time, and see what kind of um, calibration we can get. Now, obviously, Darwin Calibrator, as the name suggests, um, calibrates the model automatically for you. So a very important tool in terms of getting your model to be uh, accurate. So, we'll go ahead and open up Darwin Calibrator. 
dạ hello các anh chị bài 11 để chúng ta sẽ hiệu chuẩn chương trình hiệu chuẩn mô hình ở trong quốc trên và uh, bạn bạn Din đã đã chỉ ra cái thư mục ở trong thư mục starter thì chúng ta sẽ mở tập tin tên là Davin Calibrator việc chúng ta làm tới nay là chúng ta sẽ tạo các nhóm chúng ta sẽ thay đổi nhu cầu và dựa trên đó thì chúng ta sẽ uh, sẽ sẽ hiệu chuẩn chương trình cho nó thực uh, nó to to nó gần uh, như có thể khớp như có thể với những cái bộ dữ liệu thực địa mà chúng ta đã được cung cấp. Dạ, hello Dean, please go on. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, just um, uh, just um, to make sure, uh, I'll just try to get rid of this. Uh, yep. So, um, hopefully, everybody um, has continued with water gems since the last um, session. Uh, but just in case, um, uh, it's not part of the workshop. But um, just go to tools, more options, and in there, you just want to check that your units are in SI. So mine are, mine are already correct. So you just go okay. Okay. So. Um, out so we can just get straight into the calibration portion of of the workshop so um, up to the analysis tab and then under analysis you'll find Darwin and then Darwin calibrator okay once you have Darwin Calibrator um, open, you can go up to the top left and New Calibration Study. So in the New Calibration Study, you can see we're now on the Field Data Snapshots area here and um, you can see we don't have any, um, any Field Data Snapshots. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add these manually, but of course, um, in in a real model you would not want to add these manually what you would want to do is use this button here the import field data from skater um, we we don't have the the skater set up on on this particular um, model so we're going to do it um, a bit more simply and just type it in but um, keep in mind as, as we're typing these in we we don't actually need to um, because once you set up your skater connect then it would be done automatically for you uh, but like I said, we're going to um, we're going to type them in. So up on the field data snapshots area, go ahead and click new. Yeah. So Let me a minute. Sure. Dạ, chắc là các anh chị đã mở được cái mô hình mới, à, mô hình đã sẵn có của chúng ta. Thì chúng ta tạo một cái nghiên cứu mới ở trong Dali, uh, Davin Calibrator. Bạn để đi muốn nhắn chúng ta ở đây là để chúng ta làm rõ cái vấn đề dữ liệu vào nhập trình và như thế nào thì ở đây chúng ta sẽ làm có một chút bán thủ công. Nhưng mà trong thực tế thì các anh các chị sẽ sử dụng cái nút lệnh có mũi tên trò xuống màu xanh xương này. Đấy là nút lệnh import thì chúng ta sẽ nhập dữ liệu thực địa vào bằng cái con đường import này. Nó là cái con đường uh, automating tức là tự động hóa nhiều hơn. Còn đây thì bây giờ chúng ta tạo mới để chỉ rõ ra cái quy cách mà dữ liệu được nhập từ ngoài thực địa vào trong mô hình. Dạ, thanks, Tim. Go on, please. Sure. Yep. So, um, once you've created new field, I'm clicking um, and rename it, and we want to rename it average day. Yeah, OK. 
Okay. I think uh, so, this go on. I, I just make uh, some time a summary when it is uh, something what to mention. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Don't wait sure. for me. Yeah. Don't wait for me. Yeah. Uh, so what, what we're going to do here is we're going to go and, and enter the actual um, calibration values or the, the skater or, or field values, and we're going to do those as observed targets. So if you click New here, um, it's a, it puts in Average Day, and then it asks for the element. So if you go to the drop-down, there's nothing there, so we need to go to the ellipsis, and it's asking you to select from drawing. Now what we want to do is use the Find button here, and then you can type in... Um, whatever junction it is so um, in the in this case the first one is junction one so if you search for junction one you'll see there's junction one and then click OK it puts in junction one and then you can put the value in um, and the value for junction one is 50.6 now what we need to do um, is do the entire table so um, uh, continue to um, add them and and do each one um, as it goes down the list. So uh, you can just copy them from my screen, or of course from the um, from the workshop notes. So uh, the second one is junction two, and so on. So um, need to continually go and find them, um, and then we'll put the values in once I've once I've found them all. So the next one's junction four, and again. Um, down the list. So I'll give you a bit of time to do that. Hi, hello, Dean. Yes. Yeah, uh, you wait for the engineer finishing the table, right? Yes. Yeah, OK. Dạ, bạn đi đang chờ các anh chị cùng làm và uh, chờ các anh chị hoàn thiện cái, cái, cái bảng nhu cầu đầu tiên của mình.
Hello, Dean. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you can go faster because we have okay. been waiting for a response, but uh, seem to be okay with Safago engineer. So please go on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one, now that you've completed the the first one, we need to create a second field data snapshot. Um, so again, you want to rename it, and um, this is going to be called Fireflow at J10. So um, once you've created Fireflow at J10, you need to go to the observed target. And this time there's only four. So just four observed targets, uh, one, 10, 13, and the pump. So um, So I'll just give a, um, maybe one to two minutes there just to enter those four. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so you notice that the name of this is Fireflow at J10, which of course implies that um, we have a, a hydrant flowing um, in addition to uh, the, the values that we've got here. So um, that's going to be a demand adjustment. So go over to the demand adjustment tab and then um, create a new one. And the element here um, is of course junction 10. It has an additional demand of 71 litres per second. Okay. Um, once you've um, once you've completed the demand adjustment. Um, go back up to the field data snapshots and create uh, the third and, and final one. And this one is going to be called uh, Fire Flow at Junction 31. Okay. So once you've created Fire Flow at Junction 31, go back to the Observed Target tab. And again, uh, we need to enter four. So this one's going to be junction one, 13, 31, and the pump. I'll just give a minute or so to uh, um, finalise those. Yep.
we are okay. Okay, so um, of course we need to put the demand adjustment in for uh, Fireflow Junction 31. So of course create a new one and select Junction 31. And uh, this time it's 66.2 litres per second. So now we have our, our field data in and we can see that um, uh, obviously it's much better to, to use Skater Connect to, um, to put that in because um, the more information you have in there, uh, the better the calibration is going to be. Um, <clears throat> and of course, it'd be much, much quicker uh, to just click one button there and then and then have the whole thing populated rather than typing them in. So uh, what we need to do now is create some, some groups. And the reason we need groups is because um, all of these similar pipes uh, are going to be put together and adjusted by the same amount. So... Um, all of the cast iron and all of the ductile iron are going to be adjusted either up or down at, at the same rate. So um, the the groups that you want to make uh, are similar um, pipes as far as um, location, uh, material, and, and you can even break them up into, into diameter as well. So um, you want to break them up per, per installation year, suburb, material, um, and even further down if, if you have more information about um, which pipes to group together. All right, so let's go ahead and create a roughness group. So up the top onto the second tab, the roughness groups. And um, create a, a new one here, and you can see that it's new roughness group one. You want to rename that uh, cast iron. So obviously in this model, we have um, some cast iron pipes and you'll see later also some ductile iron. So uh, we need to, to separate those out into different groups. So once you've created the group and renamed it cast iron, you can come over to the element IDs area. It says currently there's a collection of zero items. So you want to go to the ellipsis. And um, you can see there's, there's no selection sets for us to to use, unfortunately, which means we need to go to select from drawing. So we have no way of telling which pipe is um, cast iron or ductile iron just from looking at the drawing. Um, so we need to use a query. So to use the query, um, go to the, the drop down next to the, uh, the lightning database button. And, um, and we want a custom query pipe. Go ahead and open up the custom query pipe uh, dialog, and then, of course, we're we're going to um, query on material. So scroll down until you find uh, material, and then go ahead and double click material so that it puts it down the bottom here, physical pipe material, and then. Use the equals sign, so pipe material equals, and then you can use the refresh unique values here. And as you can see, there's only two types of material used in this model, cast iron, ductile iron. So, of course, we want cast iron, so go ahead and double-click cast iron. And then click OK, and you should see that we've now... Um, selected and highlighted all of the cast iron pipes in, in the model. So go ahead and green tick done. And then OK, and you should have 17 items. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time for ductile iron. So create a new group and rename it ductile iron. And then uh, in the element IDs here, collection, again, click the ellipsis, uh, select from drawing. And then uh, we're going to use the query again. So uh, query, custom query, pipe. 
and material again. And if you re uh, refresh them, of course, this time instead of cast iron, you want to use the ductile iron. So again, once you've completed the the query, you click OK, and of course, you should notice that the highlighted ones now are all of the ones that were not highlighted uh, last time, so the, the opposite. And again, use the green tick, done, and OK, and you should have 17 and 29 uh, items in your roughness groups. So just while you're completing that, um, what, what we're going to do now that we've set up the roughness groups, we're, we're going to do a baseline. So what, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to run a, a calibration, but without changing anything. So we're just going to leave the multiplier at 1. And then what that's going to do is give us a fitness value. Now, uh, I get quite a few questions about the fitness value. Um, the, the fitness value does not have a unit on it. So it's not like, um, you know, meters of pressure or KPA or anything like that. It, it's just um, an algorithm output for um, how close your model is to your, um, your, your field data. And um, the lower the value, the better it is. So the, the ideal value would be zero if you had a perfect model. Um, but the, the questions I get is, well, what, what would be a good score for fitness for, for certain models? And um, the, the answer is that it, it depends how big your model is. And it depends how much data you've got. So the more data and the and the bigger the uh, the model, then the bigger the fitness is going to be. So smaller model, smaller fitness. Um, so it, it depends on a on a case by case basis what what a good fitness score would be. Hi, Dean. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the fitness value. This is not written in the PDF, so please give me just one minute to repeat what uh, you just saying. Sure. Yeah, các anh chị, bạn Linh vừa giải thích thêm về cái khái niệm gọi là fitness value. Ở trong sách không viết, cho nên mình xin được nhắc lại một chút. Fitness value không có đơn vị. Nó là một cái giá trị do thuật toán tính ra và cho biết về độ khớp giữa mô hình quốc trên của mình với các bộ dữ liệu thực địa đã được thu thập. Giá trị càng nhỏ thì độ khớp càng tốt. Và giá trị bằng không thì có nghĩa là cái độ khớp của mình là hoàn hảo. Nhưng mà cái hoàn hảo đấy thì là chuyện lý thuyết thôi chứ nó không xảy ra trong thực tế. Vậy thì giá trị của fitness value trong thực tế ra sao? Câu trả lời nó tùy thuộc vào độ lớn và độ phức tạp của hệ thống của mình. Hệ thống càng nhiều đường ống, càng lớn, càng phức tạp, thì chúng ta sẽ phải chuẩn bị tư tưởng cho một cái giá trị fitness nó lớn hơn so với lại một mô hình nhỏ và đơn giản. Hi, Deep. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah. OK. Um, yeah. So... Let's go ahead and um, and do our baseline run. So, um, if you come over to the the left hand area here in the in the new calibration study one, um, we're we're gonna um, go to new manual run. So new manual run, and you can see there uh, it's called it new manual run one. We're gonna rename that baseline. So, um, without making any changes, we're, we're basically going to go and see um, how accurate is our model before we've calibrated it. And so, to do that, once you've created it and renamed it, just go ahead and click Compute. Once the calibration runs completed, click Close, and then you can check your solution, and that's where you'll get your fitness. So um, the fitness here of 27 is um, not very good because, uh, as I mentioned, you you want to be as close to zero as you can. Now, 27 is not 
a, a high value for fitness. However, this is a very small model. So for a, for a small model, you, you do not want a, a fitness of 27. Okay. So um, if you go to the solution one now, um, you can see the simulated uh, results tab here. And this is where you can get the difference column. So this is showing you um, what, what's the, the error rate of, of each of our junctions from our um, our model compared to our, our field data measurements. You see that uh, uh, the pump here is, uh, uh, the junction 31, sorry, is uh, 4.1 metres difference and um, 1.4 and so on. So while it's... Um, it's quite accurate. It's a very small model, so it, it could be and, and will be more accurate. All right. So now we're just going to... Um, uh, do a very simple um, again, a, a annual run uh, to see what sort of effect chain the roughnesses will have on um, on the pressure and flow um, simulated um, and, and differences. So um, again, up to the top left and another new manual run. And this time I'm going to rename it reduce C by half. course the the value over here that we want um, to multiply by is 0.5 so we've changed it to it's much more rough so of course when you change the C factor down uh, that means the pipe is is rougher you get more head loss through so once you changed those two go ahead and compute it again and check your solution See now the uh, the value is much worse, the, the fitness value. And of course you can check the actual solution and see the differences here. We're, we're out to 20 metres and 10 metres difference and um, 8 metres and so on. So, so that making the pipes much more rough has... Is, um, uh, just just to test whether or not um, you know messing around with the uh, with the C, fa uh, C factors was, was going to have a big impact on our um, on our results here. So now that we've got our baseline um, and, and we've done a little a little manual test, what we need to do, of course, is use the optimized run. So this is what you would use to properly cal uh, calibrate your model. So again, back up to the, uh, the top left, and this time, the new optimised run. So what we need to do is change the minimum value here to 0.5 for, for both cast iron and ductile iron with a maximum value of 1.5 for both with an increment of 0.1 once you've done that go over to the options tab and we need to change the maximum trial this is the main um, the main number that we want to concentrate on uh, so change it from 10,000 to 50,000 and the reason that that's important is because um, if you don't change that uh, to be large enough then you won't give the um, the algorithm time to um, converge on a um, on a quality solution 
So there may be better solutions available, but if you don't have enough trials, then, then you won't have time to find it. So that's why that's that's an important number. Um, yeah. we hello, also hello, might... Dean. Yeah. Yes. hello, this is going to be a few seconds. Yeah, uh, các anh, các chị, bạn Dean vừa nhấn mạnh tầm quan trọng của cái tham số maximum trials. Con số này càng lớn thì chúng ta càng để cho thuật toán của Watergem có nhiều thời gian để chạy nhiều cái vòng nội suy hơn để cho chúng ta kết quả tốt hơn. Nhiều khi trong thực tế là mô hình có khả năng cho chúng ta kết quả tốt nhưng nếu mà các chị và các anh để cái tham số này quá nhỏ tức là cho Watergem và các thuật toán của nó quá ít thời gian thì chúng ta sẽ không đến được cái... Uh, giải pháp tốt nhất có thể cho nên bạn đi nhấn mạnh là trong những cái tùy chọn của chúng ta ở thẻ options thì cái tùy chọn maximum trials là một tùy chọn rất quan trọng và mình phải chú ý cho chương trình đủ thời gian cho thuật toán đủ thời gian để chạy qua tất cả các giải pháp và tìm ra cho chúng ta giải pháp tốt nhất dạ hello Dean. ok yes no worries ok so um the solutions to keep there, you want to change that to eight. And um, <coughs> uh, and then we can compute it. And now, of course, you'll see uh, it's arrived at the solution pretty quick. So if you check the solutions folder, you see uh, each of the different solutions has a, has a corresponding fitness. Of course, they're listed in order. Um, solution one being the best um, <clears throat> and um, so solution one here has a fitness of 4.3 so remember that before we um, changed anything the fitness was 27 so we've we've significantly improved um, the model so if, to, to check that if you go to solution one and, the, and there of course we're interested in the in the difference column again so see now I've got just the one that's that's over one so, um, minus 1.4 and, and 1.4 up here but all the rest uh, are within um, one meter of the of the correct pressure so um, it, it's getting more accurate um, each time can keeping in mind of course that um, all we did was um, was change the roughness we haven't changed the demand as well yet Okay, so <clears throat> now that we've um, we've calibrated it using just roughness, um, we also want to um, incorporate the demand now to 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 properly calibrate the model. So um, you you can do them separately as we just did then with with only roughness, or you can do them um, both at the same time. So that's the roughness and the demand um, all all in one um, calibration, which is typically what you'd do um, if you were building a model and then um, going and, um, and obviously trying to calibrate it after you finish building it. So um, again, um, we need to go back up to the new calibration study one because we need to create demand groups. So over to the demand groups tab and create a new one and the first um, first label it we want to change that to commercial so in this particular model we have residential and commercial and of course they're they're grouped differently because they'll, they'll have different patterns typically um, the commercial will use all their water through the day and then you have your residential with your with your standard diurnal pattern okay so we're going to do the same thing um, as we did with the pipes um, and that is click into the element IDs click the ellipsis and uh, then select from drawing but this time instead of using the query to select them um, we just need to select them with, with the mouse basically um, so just select the same ones as me So those, um, what's that, uh, eight, I think. And so I'll just give you a minute to make sure you selected the, the right ones.
All right. So hopefully you've selected those um, eight, and then you can green tick done, and then OK. So of course commercial should now have eight items. And we create the second one. So um, go ahead and rename the second one residential. And then in the element IDs, of course, select from drawing. Now this time, what we want to do is select all of the remaining um, junctions that we um, that we didn't use in the commercial. So the best way to do that is I'm just going to draw a box around all of them. So I can see I've selected every junction. And then I'm going to change my mouse here to the red minus, the remove um, button. And then I'm going to remove the commercial ones that I uh, just added to the previous group. So again, I'll just give you a, a minute to um, make sure you've selected those ones correctly. All right, so hopefully you've um, selected and unselected there, and you can now use the green tick for done, and then OK. So eight items and 21 items. Now, of course, we're going um, to create a new optimised run to, to use both the demand and roughness at the same time. So uh, back up to the top left and another new optimised run. See uh, the roughness, uh, 0 0.5, 1.5, uh, 0.1, and then you can see the demand, also 0 0.5 to 1.5 at 0 0.1. So um, those are going to be our, our range for calibration. And then you can go to the options tab, and you'll need to change the maximum trials. Again, this is 50,000. And the solutions to keep, this time we want four. So once you've set 50,004, you can compute. And you'll notice that this one takes a bit longer to run through the trials because uh, it has more information to, to work with. So once it's done, you can check your solutions. And you can see that uh, the solutions here, the, the fitness values of the solutions are, are down to 0 0.09. So obviously from, from 27, um, as, our, as our baseline with no calibration, down to 4 when we... Um, adjusted roughness and now we're down to 0 0.094 so if you check the solution you see the uh, the differences here so they're either 0 or 0 0.1 so you can see just just how much this has improved the model um, at, as far as the, the accuracy goes you see that uh, they're they're pretty much um, they're pretty much spot on so that the maximum difference here is, is 0.2 um, but uh, they're basically all um, within the the measurement error range anyway, as as far as the um, the field data goes with um, pressure transmitters or or flow meters. Okay, so the other thing that we can do is um, is uh send this solution out to our uh, uh, out to our main model so you can see on the left here we've got uh, the the base scenario what I'm going to do is with solution one highlighted I'm going to use this button here export to scenario and see it says export scenario yes export roughness yes export demands yes uh, so that's all correct and then uh, once you click OK you see that now base has um, the, the plus next to it. So I'm going to close down 
Darwin, and you'll see that we've got our new optimised run to number one here, um, and that's uh, <coughs> yeah, that's going to be our. Um, if you make it current, you'll see that you now have your updated roughness and demand in that model, um, and, and of course you could make that your base or, or whatever you want to do. But um, I, I think the point is that it's very easy to once you've got a good calibration, um, it, it, it's easy to then uh, export and update that as a new scenario. Okay, um, are there any questions on um, any of that? Uh, if not, that's um, that's the finish of the um, the calibration workshop. Yeah, hello, các anh chị, sao vậy cô ạ? Bạn Dean đã trình bày cho chúng ta một cái lần tìm giải pháp. Lần thứ hai này thì chúng ta vừa điều chỉnh nhu cầu mà chúng ta vừa điều chỉnh độ nhám của các đường ống và chúng ta thấy từ giá trị phí nhất ban đầu là 27 hơn 27 xuống còn 0.09 là một cái bước tiến triển rất là tốt và chúng ta nhìn vào những cái sự tranh lệch chi tiết trong từng mục chúng ta cũng thấy có những giá trị gần như là khác hẳn về mặt chất lượng so với lại những giá trị ban đầu chúng ta thấy À, bây giờ bạn nên muốn hỏi là các anh các chị có câu hỏi nào về vấn đề hiệu chỉnh mô hình hay không? Thì chúng ta sắp kết thúc cái bài 11 về hiệu chỉnh mô hình bằng uh, Davin Calibrator. Anh chị nào có câu hỏi không ạ? Hi Dean, hello. Yes. Yeah, we got uh, a question. Give me just oh. one minute to translate it uh, back into English. Hi Dean, hello. Yes. Uh, could you please uh, look at the chat box? The chat box. This is one question of Mr. Tan. Can you see it? Yes. The question is about the yes, error. Sir. Yeah. Accurate yeah, model yeah. calibration, how many measurement points in the field, um, mm. and you know, limited measurement points, of course. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so um, the the fitness value there that's, that's going to be acceptable um, is based um, on, of course, the number of measurement points, but also the size of the model. So without knowing the size of the model, um, it's it's difficult to to know um, whether the the, the fitness um, is is too much or whether it's acceptable. So um, it, it's on a um, it, it depends on the size of the model more more than anything. So um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, without knowing the size of the model, um, it, it's too difficult. But um, it. That's also one of the reasons that we did the baseline run. So um, 
a, a good way to test the fitness of your calibration is to just very quickly do the manual run with the baseline. Um, and, um, and that way you can compare your, your fitness post calibration with no calibration. And, and that should give you a, an indication based on the size of your model, um, whether you're actually improving your model with the calibration or, um, or not really with, um, you know, with that baseline run. So I would say, um, test it with the baseline and then, um, go from there and, and see whether you can, um, significantly reduce that fitness value. But, um, again, uh, it, it's really the model size that, um, that's going to determine that fitness. Yep. Okay. I have trust the major summary. Uh, can I repeat it in Vietnamese a bit? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the summary is correct, right? Yes. Dạ, yeah, ok, dạ. Anh, anh, anh Cao Văn Tấn ạ, dạ, kính thưa các anh chị, bạn câu trả lời của bạn uh, Din uh, về vấn đề cái uh, mức error, tức là mức lỗi như thế nào là có thể chấp nhận được. Thì nó không có một câu trả lời um, gọi là về giá trị uh, cụ thể. Bởi vì sao? Bởi vì cái mức error nào là có thể chấp nhận được thì dựa, tức là thật ra nó là giá trị của fitness ấy. Giá trị của fitness dựa trên hai yếu tố khác nhau. Yếu tố thứ nhất là số lượng các điểm mà chúng ta đo đạc trên thực địa. Nhưng mà còn một yếu tố mạnh hơn nữa, gây ảnh hưởng lớn hơn nữa. Đấy là kích cỡ của mô hình. Mà kích cỡ của mô hình trong thực tế thì nó rất khác nhau. Cho nên không thể đưa ra một con số cụ thể là error cỡ 0.3 hay là 0.13 hay là 0.39 là có thể chấp nhận được. Vì vậy mà nếu chúng ta nhìn nhận lại trong cả cái 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 bài workshop tức là bài thực hành lớn ngày hôm nay ấy công đấy là cái mục tên là baseline. Khi chúng ta chạy baseline chúng ta sẽ có cái giá trị fitness đầu tiên và chúng ta lấy cái đó làm cơ sở để bắt đầu và để so sánh. Khi chúng ta sử dụng sự thay đổi về độ nhám. Sau nữa chúng ta sử dụng thêm sự thay đổi về nhu cầu. Chúng ta sẽ có những con số để biết được rằng thực hiện hiệu chỉnh theo cách này chúng ta sẽ có được giá trị Hi, Mr. Dean. Hello. Yes. yes. Yeah, we have a second part of a question. I will pass this into... Sure, no worries. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Could you please see it? Yes. So, complex water supply systems, um, basic pipeline parameters of many information gaps. Uh, which parameters should we prioritize? Um, yeah. 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 So uh, um, the diameter is going to be um, the the most key thing. So um, getting the the diameter information for each pipe would be, um, I think, the the highest priority. Um, and then then of course the elevations, but um, the, the elevations are, are a bit different from. Um, from diameter because diameter um, is something you have to know whereas with um, uh, with the elevation you can use a file to to to, um, to do that so you can use a, a contour file for example to, to update all of them whereas the diameter is going to be on a on a um, pipe by pipe basis so it's going to be a lot more um, crucial um, depending on on what information they have to um, to get the elevations from but uh, definitely um, the diameter, and then um, the the second thing would be the pump information. So um, you you need to know the the pump model and make so that you can get the correct pump curve. Um, otherwise, the pressure and flow will never match if you don't have the correct pumping information. So um, the, those are the two main things um, uh, with uh, with the contour file. So uh, that's what I would be prioritising.
Yeah. Okay. So summary first priority will be the diameter, the right of the yes. pipe, and second priority will be the pump information. Yeah, specifically yeah. the pump curve. Yeah. Pump curve. Yeah. Okay. Dạ, thưa các anh chị, bạn Đinh trả lời câu hỏi 2 là trong tình huống những cái hệ thống phân phối nước rất là phức tạp thì chúng ta sẽ gặp rất nhiều tham số và những tham số này cũng có lỗi nữa. Thế thì chúng ta cần phải ưu tiên những tham số nào? Câu trả lời là tham số đầu tiên chúng ta, nhóm tham số đầu tiên chúng ta cần ưu tiên là đường kính của các đường ống. Và nhóm thứ hai là chúng ta cần chú ý đến thông tin của các máy bơm. Cụ thể ở đây là pump curve, tức là đồ thị của máy bơm. Yeah, okay. Some question. Yeah, hi, Dean. Hello. No yes. question more. Yeah, no question more. Please go on. Uh, yeah, so um, th that's the, the finish of that workshop. So... Um, Should we take a, a 15 or 20 minute break? Yeah. Okay. So, các anh chị bạn Dean vừa mới hoàn thành uh, cái bài thực hành đầu tiên về hiệu chuẩn mô hình. Uh, bây giờ bạn đề nghị là chúng ta sẽ tạm uh, nghỉ ngắn chừng uh, 15 phút và chúng ta sẽ gặp lại uh, với nhau ở bài tiếp theo. Cảm ơn các anh chị. Okay, Dean. So, 15 minutes, right? Yep, sure. Yep. Okay. Okay. So yeah. have a nice cafe. See you in a few minutes. Yeah, okay. No problem. Chào các anh chị, chúng ta bắt đầu bài uh, thực hành thứ hai được không ạ? Hello, bên bên các anh chị quay trở lại chưa ạ? Hello. Uh. Hello. Yep. Uh, uh, give us one minute. We are chatting with Savago engineer Unzalo. Just, sure. Just one minute. Yeah. We are calling them back. Hi, Dean. Hello. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's begin. Uh, which lesson? Uh, number Are you 12. Gonna... Number 12, yeah. Pipe, pipe renewal planner. Okay. Okay, let's go, please. Okay, so uh, close down the the last one, and then um, open the solder um, and uh, PRP start. So pipe renewal planner start. That's the one you want to. Open.
So um, basically, Pipe Renewal Planner is um, is a tool uh, that that's just what what the name sounds like. So um, this is going to let you do um, various um, tests or, or add what we call aspects to um, to the Pipe Renewal Planner um, in in order to um, basically find the pipes that um, uh, th that are a problem. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that they're they're the oldest or that they need replacing for a particular reason. It could be that it's based on water quality, or it could be based on um, you know bottlenecks or um, a combination of of many things. So um, it, it's a very flexible tool that that'll allow you to um, to find. Um, uh, and and replace uh, pipes that are um, that are of particular interest um, uh, based on what what you want to use as your um, aspects or or your criteria for um, upgrading or replacing pipes. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, hello. Give me one minute. Sure. Dạ, chào các anh chị. Uh, bài tiếp theo chúng ta sẽ học là về lập kế hoạch đổi mới đường ống. Chúng ta sẽ sử dụng một công cụ tên là Pipe Renewal Planner ở trong Waterstream. Công cụ này, uh, Mr. Dean muốn uh, nhấn mạnh với lại các anh chị, đây là một công cụ rất linh hoạt. Chúng ta sẽ tìm ra những đường ống có vấn đề ở trong hệ thống là đối tượng để chúng ta cần phải chú ý hoặc là sửa chữa hoặc là đổi mới. Những đối tượng này không nhất thiết là đường ống cũ nhất. Mà việc cho điểm và xác định đối tượng này sẽ dựa trên rất là nhiều tiêu chí khác nhau. Ở đây chúng ta sẽ gọi nó là khía cạnh hoặc là gọi là aspect trong bài thực hành này. Vấn đề ở đây uh, gọi là điểm tốt của cái công cụ Pipe Renewal Planner này là bản thân người dùng sẽ có thể xác định chỉ ra những khía cạnh nào, tức là những chỉ số nào sẽ được sử dụng để cho điểm số các đường ống vào trong hệ thống và nó phụ thuộc hoàn toàn vào cái mục đích cũng như là tình trạng của hệ thống mà chúng ta đang phục vụ. Ok đến. Ok, so uh, as you can see we have some color coding here. So if you go to the element symbology tab, you'll see that um, it's currently uh, turned on for diameter. Um, and there's other options here, so you can see that if you turn off diameter, um, you'll see that um, you, you have velocity um, installation year. So if you tick on installation year, you'll find um, there's there's quite um, you know quite distinctive groups here as far as where each of the section part was installed. Um, and then um, if you turn that one off, and you do material through the um, through the network. So the idea is that um, we see, but you know, based on these different um, color codings here, that, um, uh, that there's quite a few criteria that we can use to um, um, to separate out our pipes in the in order. So um, that's all we had to do as far as j just turn them on and off, just for for interest. Um, and um, and now we can get started with Pipe Renewal Planner. So um, one of the aspects that you can use if, if you want to um, is is the criticality results. So, um, uh, of course, to use the results in Pipe Renewal Planner, then you need the results available in your... Um, ..in your model. So um, we, we need to go... Um, and the, and the breaks and then and then we'll be able to um, to use those results in Pipe Renewal Planner. Dạ hello, just skip me a minute. Dạ các anh các chị nhìn thấy ở đây chúng ta uh, có một công cụ mang tính trực quan rất cao tên là Element Symbology. Trong sách thì chúng tôi có dịch nó ra là biểu tượng của phần tử. Các anh các chị có thể bật và tắt từng cái mục tức là từng cái aspect ở phía bên trái và chúng ta sẽ nhìn thấy ở trong khung bản vẽ phía bên phải là các đối tượng được mã hóa bằng màu. Qua đó thì cái tính trực quan rất cao ta có thể nhìn thấy hệ thống của chúng ta chia ra thành các nhóm khác nhau. 
dựa theo tiêu chí mà chúng ta đang chọn ví dụ như diameter có nghĩa là dựa trên cái đường kính của đường ống hoặc chúng ta chọn về material tức là vật liệu làm nên ống thì chúng ta sẽ sử dụng cái tính trực quan này để theo dõi những gì mình đang làm những gì chúng ta cần chỉ là chúng ta bật và tắt những khía cạnh này để cho chương trình biết rằng mình sẽ cho điểm các đường ống dựa trên những tiêu chí nào sau đó thì chúng ta sẽ bên cạnh đó chúng ta còn có cả cái uh, một cái hộp thoại sẽ cho chúng ta biết từng màu một sẽ ứng với loại ví dụ như loại vật liệu nào ví dụ như ban nãy chúng ta nhìn thấy bạn ấy bật material thì các anh các chị sẽ nhìn thấy ống màu cam ấy là ống nhựa PVC ống màu blue rất là đậm đấy là ống nhựa à, ống bằng gang dẻo màu xanh lơ là ống bằng gang Toàn bộ bài thực hành tới đây của chúng ta sẽ là tính toán để tìm ra cái mức độ nghiêm trọng của từng phần tử ở trong hệ thống. Sau đó chúng ta sẽ đưa lại những cái thông tin này đưa vào trong lịch và lên lịch để sửa cũng như thay thế đường ống. Dạ yeah, ok, I'm fine. Hi, okay. please. Yeah. Yes. So on the um, analysis tab here, um, I want to go and um, and select criticality. So go ahead and open up criticality. See, um, there's already one set up here for critical pipe segments for for the base um, base scenario. So go ahead and click compute. And um, once you've clicked compute, um, you can um, you can see there's there's 53 segments. And then um, what we want to do is um, go down uh, on the left here, go to the added segments, and um, and go ahead and click compute. So we're just uh, we're just making more results available um, as we go through. So. Um, on to the next one, on to criticality. Uh, before you compute criticality, go to the run hydraulic engine um, box, tick run hydraulic engine, and um, and click compute. So now that we've got um, all of our, um, our results computed here for... Uh, uh, for criticality, that, that that's it. So all, all we needed to do was um, just just run, and then um, have a result for later. So all we'll use those later on. So that's it. Close it down. So we're going to do exactly the same thing with um, with the fire flow. So um, it, it's already set up for it. We just need to go and and um, get the results. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the scenarios, and you'll see there's one here set up for us called Fireflow, and um, use the the red tick for make up, and then um, we'll just um, we'll go and check the alternatives um, or the the settings before we um, before we actually go and and compute it. So uh, if you go to Fireflow. You can go um, to the drop down on the analysis to um, tab and see their um, fire flow constraints. So what we want to do is just look here and need that's that's our minimum. So any any junctions that can't deliver sixty three will fail. Um, and of course, there's pressure constraints here as well. So um, we don't need to change anything. We're just we're just checking on it, um, and then close. So once you've checked it, you can compute it. Okay. So you close that down. 
uh, we can check our results. And to do that, um, you go to the Fireflow, and then we want to look at the Fireflow results browser. It uh, failed for some reason. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, so there's been some um, there's been some updates in the in the Fireflow engine since um, since this workshop, uh, and um, yeah, and what it's done is it's added an extra constraint in here which we've uh, which we've violated. So we need to go and fix it. So um, junction ninety six, um, and uh, there it is there. So um, the reason that junction ninety six is not working is because um, you can see that it's on the suction side of the pumps. So what, what we need to do is, um, is add that to a selection set and then exclude it. So uh, to do that, um, what we need to do is firstly um, just go to, to Junction 96 here and with it highlighted, um, right click Create selection set, and I'm just going to call it Junction 96. Keeping in mind that this is not in the in the notes. So once you've created the selection set of Junction 96. Um, go back up to Fireflow Constraints, and then Nodes to Exclude, Junction 96. So once you've excluded Junction 96, go and compute it again. Okay. Now we have our uh, correct results available. So again, we're going to check the Fireflow results browser. This time, you can see that most of them have passed. However, there's some that have failed. So again, um, all, all we're doing here is making these results available um, for uh, for use later on in the in this same workshop. So we're, we're going to take these results and we're going to use it as part of our pipe renewal planner run. So we don't need to do anything more. We just we've we've run it correctly, and we now um, we can now shut down the results and um, and continue on with. Uh, with Pipe Renewal Planner. So, uh, back to the uh, scenarios and make base the current scenario. So put the red tick back in base there. And um, and what we're going to do now is is um, a pipe break analysis. So, we're, we're going to look at the duration of the um, who failed uh, at over what time and what um, and in what group that was in, and then we'll compute the pipe break analysis, and then we'll use those results uh, later on. So um, to do that, we need to go to the alternatives. So if you go to the alternatives, which should be listed there uh, or up there, um, you'll find that um, there there is a failure history alternative. So that uh, You've got the base failure history here, and you want to double click to open up base failure history. So 
So, duration of pipe failure history is 20 years. See the, the number of breaks column here is, is currently empty. And so we need to import um, from uh, from a spreadsheet so that we can we can populate um, the, the number of breaks here. So to do that, um, up to the top left, you'll find the import button. Go ahead and import. The one that you want, um, as far as data source type, will be um, Excel, you know, 10, um, 7. Then um, select a data source, go ahead and click Browse, and uh, you'll find the WCU break file. So go ahead and open up WCU break file. All right, once you've done that, um, go ahead and click Next. See the current alternative. Um, the specify key field um, is label, and then um, that's all already set, so you can click Next. And then the table type that we want is pipe. Table format, pipe break table, that's correct. Key field is label. And then uh, what we need to do down the bottom here is go to breaks. And the property that we want um, on the right hand side here um, is number of breaks. All right, so um, number of breaks all done, and um, we can uh, click finish. And should have 19 pipes updated. Okay, so if you close that down, you'll see that we now have breaks in there. Before we close out of this to, to create our pipe break groups, um, we will need to uh, add the cost of break. Um, so the cost of break here, if you right click global edit and set that to 5000 So $5,000 per break. Okay, once that's done, uh, close it down. So we, what we've done is we've put the information into the pipe break alternative. Now we need to go and actually run the analysis on it. So um, we'll need to firstly create groups, and then um, once we've created the groups and assigned them, then we can run the actual analysis. So uh, to find that, if you go to Pipe Renewal Planner, underneath Pipe Renewal Planner, you'll find the pipe break. and create a new pipe break analysis. And the representative scenario that we want is base. To see that the number of breaks is already populated. What we don't have though is pipe break groups. Um, so over to the pipe break groups tab, and then you'll see the button here, the, the groups. So what we need to do is, um, based on selection sets, create each group and then assign each group the correct um, group of pipes, which is already done for us. So we just need to match up um, the group with the um, selection set. So if you create a new one, a pipe break group here, um, number one, the first one is going to be pre-1940. So 
See on the pipe group here, you've got add pipes from selection set or add pipes from drawing. We want from selection set. And in the selection set, you'll find that there's one called pre-1940. So what we need to do is create this one and then create all of the rest of these um, these uh, numbered years. So 41 to 50, all the way up to 91 to 2010, uh, with pre-1940 being the first one. So um, you can go through and, and complete each of those groups. Um, so it'll be, uh, I think, six groups in total uh, with six corresponding selection sets. So um, the next one here um, you'll see is going to be 1941 to 50, I think. Uh, 1941 to 50, and then 51 to 60, and so on. So I'll give you a few minutes to go and complete each of those um, groups. Yeah, Heidi, hello, let's go. Yes. Yeah. Done? Okay. Um, so, close those down, and, um, and you'll find that you now have the, the groups um, listed. And then, I just want to go over to the options. Grab While you're there, um, go and tick Compute Pipe Break Auxiliary Results. The projection period we want is 30 years and an interest rate of 5%. Okay, so once you've done that, you can go back to the pipe breaks yep. and, um, and then click Compute. So see here we've got um, these um, these three columns here. So per year per kilometre. So that's based on the individual pipe break, and then you've got the the pipe group. So breaks per year per kilometre um, for each group, and then the scaled. So this is taking into account both the the break rate and the um, group break rate. So um, basically, it's saying well, an individual pipe may have 
have worse than the group, but it takes into the into account the group as well. So these are the results that we're going to use within Pipe Renewal Planner um, for our uh, uh, our overall um, rating of all the pipes. But uh, keep in mind that you can use the 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 pipe break analysis here without having to use it within um, Pipe Renewal Planner. Uh, this can be used as a standalone tool as well. Yeah, Heidi, hello. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you please uh, uh, explain uh, once more time about the three column break rate? This is uh, sure. yeah. Okay, break for year and for kilometer. Yep. So the second okay. is for average value for the group. Yeah, so uh, because the, the pipes are grouped together um, based on their age, um, the, they have a, a group rate, which is where they've taken all of the pipes and, um, and worked out how, um, uh, you know, how often they break in terms of per year per kilometre. Um, but then the individual pipes, like, for example, this pipe here, pipe 17, you can see that it has a break on it specifically. So um, it it gets a, um, a break rate individually, and then it also gets the the, um, the the group rate. The rest, you can see that it's the same group rate as all the rest of the pipes in its group, um, but it has a higher um, overall scaled break rate than the ones in its group because it has the, um, the additional individual break as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. That Thưa các anh chị, từ nãy đến giờ thì chúng ta đã tạo ra 6 nhóm các đường ống ở trong hệ thống. Tiêu chí để chúng ta tạo nhóm cho các đường ống này là dựa vào 5 cài đặt, tức là vào tuổi thọ tương đối của các đường ống. 6 nhóm này thì trong hệ thống, tức là trong tập tin mà chúng ta mở của bài tập này, người ta đã tạo sẵn thành 6 cái selection set, tức là 6 bộ lựa chọn. Thì ở đây bạn Dean chỉ cần chọn Selection Set là chúng ta sẽ có được ở trong bảng Excel này những cái đường ống nào phụ thuộc vào nhóm nào. Sau khi chạy uh, phân tích về vỡ ống thì chúng ta sẽ có được giá trị ở đây trên bảng trên màn hình chúng, nhìn, chúng ta có giá trị về tần suất vỡ ống tính theo năm và trên từng km cho từng ống cũng như cho từng nhóm. Thì bạn đi muốn nhấn mạnh ở đây là những giá trị này chúng ta sẽ đưa sang Pipeline Planner của WaterChem để tính tự động ra những đối tượng cần phải chú ý nhất trong khi lên lịch thay ống. Nhưng mặt khác thì bản thân cái bảng Flexible mà các anh chị nhìn thấy trên màn hình cũng có thể được dùng để mà tham khảo cho rất là nhiều những mục đích và những công việc khác. Tức là bản thân cái bảng này nó đã có giá trị sử dụng như là một cái uh, sản phẩm đầu cuối rồi. Ngoài cái việc là đưa những giá trị này vào trong tình uh, trình uh, ứng dụng lên lịch Pipe Renewal Planner của WaterChem. Dạ, ok Dean. Let's go. Ok, excellent. So, um, now that we've got the results available, um, we can we can go and get started on, on the actual Pipe Renewal Planner. So um, go ahead and open up Pipe Renewal Planner. And create a new one. And the representative scenario that we want is base. And you can see that we've, we've automatically got um, break rate, criticality, and fire flow um, uh, automatically assigned. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use them. You don't have to use any of these. You can just create this on your own and, and tick on which ones you want to use or not use. Um, but in this case, um, we're, we're, we are going to use these three. So the, we need to change the um, scenario. So for pipe break, base for capacity uh, criticality sorry um, base and then of course for fire flow you need to choose the fire flow um, scenario because um, it needs to access the the results that we've 
uh, computed in uh, in our various scenarios and and features. Dạ, bạn đi muốn nhấn mạnh thêm một lần nữa với các anh chị rằng công cụ file planner ở đây là rất là linh hoạt. Ở đây chúng ta nhìn cái bốn cái là vỡ ống là độ nghiêm trọng là lưu lượng khi chữa cháy và kể cả về cái risiko tức là độ nghiêm trọng à độ độ rủi ro của thể lực nhưng bạn muốn nhấn mạnh lại đây là bốn cái được tạo sẵn cho một cái bài thực hành tiêu biểu trong khuôn khổ khóa training của chúng ta còn ngoài đời thực thì bản thân các anh và các chị không cần phải sử dụng bất kỳ một cái khía cạnh nào được nêu ra ở đây các chị và các anh có thể tự tạo ra những cái aspect của riêng mình dựa trên những cái kịch bản tức là những cái scenario mà các anh chị tạo trước đó và sẽ thực hiện phân tích dựa trên đúng cái cách chấm điểm của riêng bản thân mình cũng như cái hệ thống của bản thân mình. Ok, we are, we are okay to go on. Okay. Okay. So you can go and click compute and um, and you can see this main column. Um, pipe score so pipe score is the main column so what I'm going to do is right click sort descending because the higher the score the worse the pipe is so the worst pipe would be 100 and the best pipe would be zero so you can see what's happened here with pipe 131 so you can see it has a a, a raw score pipe break of 0.51 which gives it um, four out of 100 so it's actually um, as far as the um, the pipe break goes, it's got a very good score. Um, and then you can see the criticality score, which is um, 100 out of 100. So obviously it is a very critical pipe. And then you can also see the fire flow. So it has a 2.6 meters a second velocity during fire flow, which gives it 90 out of 100. So <coughs> see it's 100 out of 100 plus 90 out of 100 plus four out of 100, which equals 65 out of 100. So um, that's why that pipe is so bad. It's because it's critical and it has a low capacity. So that's our worst pipe. Uh, and you can go through and you can check them all. But what we want to do is instead of reading them off the table, we want to see it visually. So if you close down, uh, you just remember that pipe score is the one we're interested in here. So close that down and go back to the element symbology. And you can see that we've got a pipe score color coding here. So I'm going to tick on pipe score and you can see that um, all it's done is just make them all red. So we need to fix up the pipe score um, color coding. So if you double click on pipe score you'll see that there's no range here. So somebody's ch uh, put in the, um, the field pipe score. We need to now calculate range. see that it's 3 to 65 and then um, if you use the third button along there initialize and then click apply you should see that you now have updated color coding where um, where we can see the um, the map see the the worst pipe here in in red is this one here so the reason that that is in red is because um, it, it's critical because you can see that it feeds this entire area um, and then also the um, the fire flow results showed us that it's it's undersized um, because of that that high velocity um, during the during the fire flow. So that's why that one there is the worst. All right. So we're just going to do a second run so that we can. Uh, we can add an additional aspect. So you can see um, just how easy it is to, to add additional aspects. So back to the um, scenarios here. And um, on, on the base scenario, uh, we'll take a new child called score by type. Okay, 
Um, so once you've created score by type, go to Piper and I'm going to use the duplicate button here and um, I'm going to rename it including material the representative scenario is score by type And um, what we're going to do is uh, create a, a new aspect. So um, up under the general tab, click new. See um, aspect says none. If you go to the drop down, there's none available. So we need to we need to create it. So if you go to the ellipsis, it'll open up the aspects here, where we can um, create any any type of new. Um, criteria we want to, to judge our pipes on. So if you click new, and I'm going to rename that material. And then the property, of course, is material. And then I'm going to use the initialize button. All right, so now we need to give it a score, keeping in mind that 100 is the worst score and 0 is the best score. So for asbestos cement, it'll be 50, cast iron is 100, and then the other two are 0 and 0. So what we're saying here is that um, for some reason, cast iron um, for, for our particular network is very, very bad. So um, maybe it was um, a, a faulty um, batch of cast iron pipes or um, they were installed incorrectly or, or whatever it is cast iron is the worst see asbestos cement is is halfway and then um, ductile iron and PVC um, are, uh, are the good pipes okay so if you close the aspects down and you need to select it so um, select material and now we need to change the weighting because it needs to add up to one. So as you can see, um, they're all weighted equally. So I'm, I'm going to go global edit and set it to 0.25. So each each of the four that we're using has the same weighting on the on the overall score. Now, of course, you can change that um, if you want. Yeah. Hello. Give me yeah. just a minute. That. Uh, bạn nên muốn uh, uh, nhắn tới các anh chị là ở đây chúng ta lần đầu tiên chúng ta chạy phân tích ấy, chúng ta chỉ chọn 3 điểm số thôi theo ba cái mục đầu tiên của cột aspect ở đây thì chúng ta đã tìm được ra những đường uh, những cái đường ống nào là uh, bị cho điểm là tệ nhất và tệ cả về uh, phương diện nào chúng ta cũng có thể nhìn được chi tiết là ví dụ như tỷ lệ vỡ ống là bao nhiêu, cái độ nghiêm trọng là bao nhiêu và kể cả về mặt lưu lượng ấy, thì nó tệ đến mức nào. Bây giờ chúng ta chạy một lần thứ hai và chúng ta muốn trong lần này thì chúng ta muốn uh, tính toán đến một khía cạnh thứ tư, một cái điểm số thứ tư, tức là tính toán theo vật liệu. Thì chúng ta đã tạo ra khía cạnh mới ở đây, tức là aspect ở dòng thứ năm ở đây chúng ta có chữ material và chúng ta đã cho điểm cho các loại vật liệu để tạo đường ống ở đây thì uh, bạn vừa sửa lại cái giá trị ở trong cột tên là weight có nghĩa là hệ số trọng lượng mình mình gọi tắt nó là hệ số bạn vừa chỉnh vào đây dùng global edit để chỉnh cả bốn khía cạnh này thì dĩ nhiên chia đều ra mỗi khía cạnh sẽ đóng vai trò là 25 phần trăm trong cái tính toán tổng số của chúng ta. Nhưng như đã nói, đây là một công cụ rất linh hoạt, cho nên người dùng có thể sửa những giá trị ở trong cột quay theo cái hoàn cảnh riêng của mình và theo cái mục đích phân tích riêng của mình. Dạ. Yeah. Okay, thưa cậu. Yeah. Okay, so once you've done that, you can click compute.
Oh, we forgot to put the um, scenario in for uh, material. So add the uh, scenario and then you can... Uh, it's interesting. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, so um, before you compute the um, the pipe renewal planner including material, just go and um, make score by type current and, and compute it. Uh, not sure why you need results, but um, that's what it's saying. And then, um, of course, you can sort descending the um, the pipe score again. And you see that it's the same pipe, pipe 131. But you want to um, check it on the map. There you can see on the map um, it's significantly changed the um, uh, the the colour coding here. And you can see all of these pipes now in the um, in the cast iron area are, um, are much worse off. Okay. Um, uh, are there any questions on Pipe Renewal Planner, because that is the end of, of that workshop. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's, let's talk. Em hỏi xem các anh chị có các câu hỏi nào. Dạ, các anh chị bên Savaco có câu hỏi nào về vấn đề lịch trình sửa chữa và thay thế ống không ạ? Ở đây, cầu hiếu là cao. Em không nghe thì chị nói à. Dạ, các bạn, các anh chị bên Savaco có câu hỏi nào về lịch trình lập sửa chữa đường ống không ạ? Hi, hello, Lin, can can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, I just my net just broke. Just give us one minute. Yeah. Sure. Hi, Dean. Hello. Yes. We don't see any question from the Zalo chat. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Maybe well, we can, uh, yeah, include the, make summary for the workshop. Yeah. Sure. So, um, the, basically, um, Pipe Renewal Planner is, um, is a tool that you can, you can use um, however you would like as far as um, adding the aspects. So we, we went through and we did the criticality and the fire flow and the pipe break analysis and used that. Um, but you can use anything you like. So it, if you wanted to find bottlenecks, for example, you could just use flow and head loss and velocity and, and stuff like that. If, if you wanted to use it for water quality, you could use things like um, chlorine residual or, or age, things like that. So you can, you can use Pipe Renewal Planner um, however you want so it's not a it's not a fixed 
um, tool where you, where you have to use it um, the way it's set up. You can you can add any aspects you like, and use them with whatever weightings you would like. So it's a it's a very um, a very powerful tool because it is so versatile. Um, and obviously, um, it, as the name suggests, you can you can use it for your your standard maintenance, um, as far as you know which which pipes to upgrade on a on a yearly basis on you know on things like age and, and capacity, or you can use it for for specific projects as well. Um, and and as you can see, um, although we did a lot of previous setup as far as the, the fire flow and the criticality and all that, um, it, it, it's actually already ready to use so if you were just going to use something like flow or velocity or head loss um, you could just go in there and 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 create and run a, a pipe renewal planner um, uh, run it, it in a matter of um, a minute or two so it's it's not just powerful it's also very easy to use um, so yeah that that workshop just gives you a, a bit of an idea of um, what what it's what's possible to do with pipe renewal planner Dạ, yeah, ok, thank you. Dạ, yeah, các anh các chị, uh, bạn Dean muốn tóm tắt lại cái bài số 12 của chúng ta như sau. Uh, đây chỉ là một lời giới thiệu điển hình và ngắn gọn để các anh các chị có được cảm giác về độ mạnh mẽ cũng như là mức độ linh hoạt của cái lịch trình uh, sửa chữa và thay thế đường ống trong Water Gym. Ở đây chúng ta đã sử dụng 3 đến 4 khía cạnh, nhưng trong thực tế thì phần mềm uh, công cụ này rất linh hoạt các anh các chị có thể uh, tự tạo ra và sử dụng rất rất nhiều những cái uh, aspect khác ví dụ như độ nghiêm trọng ví dụ như về tần suất vỡ ống ví dụ về lưu lượng kể cả về tuổi nước chất lượng nước uh, và 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 sức chứa uh, thì rất uh, các anh các chị có thể sử dụng bất kỳ một cái tổ hợp nào từ uh, những cái khía cạnh đó ở đây chúng ta trong cái bài này thì chúng ta sẽ nhìn thấy là chúng ta có một số những cái bộ lựa chọn tức là những cái selection set sẵn có được tạo dựa trên những tiêu chí mà chúng ta thấy ở đây và một khi mà uh, các anh các chị đã tạo xong những bộ lựa chọn như vậy tương ứng với từng kịch bản và tương ứng với từng cái tiêu chí mà các anh các chị chỉ định thì công cụ chạy rất nhanh Thậm chí là chúng ta có thể cho điểm tất cả các đường ống trong hệ thống nội trong vòng một phút đồng hồ. Vậy thì hy vọng là qua cái bài workshop này thì các anh các chị của công ty Savaco có thể nhìn thấy cái độ linh hoạt cũng như là sức mạnh cũng như là độ phủ về ứng dụng của công cụ N. Dạ, ok Dean, I'm finished. Okay, great. So um, we'll um, we'll take another break now, and then uh, we'll come back for the next workshop, which will be Darwin Designer. Darwin Designer, yeah. Okay. Um, Rồi chúng ta vừa kết thúc bài tập uh, về lịch trình đường ống. Uh, chúng ta sẽ nghỉ ngắn và quay trở lại thì chúng ta sẽ học một bài về Darwin Designer, tức là sử dụng một công cụ để tự động hóa thiết kế. So, Dean, uh, what should it be? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Um, let, let's say um, back at 11.45. Um, 11.45. Okay, yeah. We're, we're making good time. Okay, so, so see you in 11.45. Excellent. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah, nice cafe break. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>
Okay, Dr. Hawa, team. Hello? Yep. Hey, Darius. Yep. Can hear you, Dean. Thank you. Ty? Mike Ed? I don't think that Dr. Hawa is uh, connected. She's having problem with her connection. Yeah, Mr. Tai. Trying to connect and communicate to Dr. Hoa. I'm communicating to Dr. Howa now. Uh, pardon me. Just a minute here. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yes, please. Are we good now, Mr. Tai? Okay then, please. So shall we begin or you will make um, the introduction, introductory remarks? Yeah, hi Dean, hi Mr. Darius. Hello. Okay, then. yes, thank you, yes. Yeah, thank you. I am back. Uh, I had posted the summary of problem statement and also the content in the chat box. We are going to do the 13 that we designer, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Dean, could you carry on? Thank you. Sure. Dạ, chào các anh các chị quay lại từ giờ nghỉ ạ. Bây giờ chúng ta sẽ học bài 13. Chúng ta sẽ sử dụng công cụ Darwin Designer để tự động hóa thiết kế mạng cung cấp nước của mình. Mong các anh các chị bỏ một phút đọc qua cái phần tóm tắt nội dung ở trong chat box của Microsoft Teams ạ. Phần tóm tắt thì chúng ta có 3 phần. Cái thứ nhất là nội dung của toàn chương, tức là toàn bài workshop này. Phần thứ hai là chi tiết cụ thể những việc chúng ta sẽ phải làm. Và phần thứ ba là chi tiết hơn nữa về đường ống cũng như về nút J500. Nút J500 này là đại diện cho cái khu thương mại mới mà chúng ta sẽ phải phục vụ. Ở đây chúng ta cũng nhìn thấy cả yêu cầu về lưu lượng và áp suất.
Hi, Dean. Yeah, yes. okay. So, yeah. Okay, yes. great. So, if you yeah. close down Pipe Renewal Planner and then open up um, Darwin Designer. So, uh, what, what we've got here is designed and, and built. And then uh, if you zoom into this area here, um, on the, the right-hand side, you'll find that there's junction 500. And then you can see these various grey pipes that are um, coming into um, junction 500. So, if you check those grey pipes, you'll find that they've been given uh, a diameter of 25 millimetres. Um, so, basically, they're... they're um, their decoy pipes or their um, their undesigned piped pipes. So we've just given them a, a nominal diameter, and then obviously we can use Darwin Designer to design the pipes for us. So at the moment they're just um, they're just laid out pipes, um, but but with no no proper diameter. So that's where we're going to use Darwin Designer. Okay, so. Um, we can um, we can go ahead and get straight into it. So um, you can go up on the analysis tab and Darwin, and this time designer. Now the nice thing about um, the the three Darwin modules is that they're all very similar. So um, the the way they work is um, they, they do different functions, but they all um, ha have the same kind of steps and um, look and feel. So the, you're, um, you're familiar with them. Okay, so up to the top left and new designer study. Okay. Um. Dạ, hello các anh chị. Ban nãy bạn Dean có giới thiệu nút khu vực của nút J500. Đó là khu vực uh, J500 này là nút uh, đại diện cho khu thương mại mới. Nhưng mà nhìn trên hệ thống, tức là nhìn vào khu bản vẽ thì chúng ta có thể nhìn thấy đây là một khu vực chưa được thiết kế chi tiết. Và bây giờ chúng ta lập một cái nghiên cứu mới sử dụng Darwin Designer để mà làm chi tiết cho khu vực này. Yeah. Yes, uh, 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 yeah. New design study one there. I'm going to name that least cost design. So, um, we're naming it least cost because um, uh, um, later on we, we are going to do one where we consider the pressure benefits. But the first one is just um, the the minimum cost to to be able to um, to meet the constraints, and then later on we'll do um, we'll do one with a with a budget and some um, some pressure benefits. Dạ, các anh chị okay. chúng ta đặt tên cho cái nghiên cứu đầu tiên của chúng ta là Least Cost Design, tức là thiết kế ít tốn kém nhất. Lý do tại sao chúng ta đặt tên như vậy? Vì cái phần việc đầu tiên trong bài thực hành này là chúng ta sẽ tìm ra giải pháp có thiết kế, uh, giải pháp thiết kế có chi phí thấp nhất có thể. Sau đó chúng ta sang dẫn thứ hai thì chúng ta sẽ xét chi tiết và tinh tế hơn, tức là chúng ta sẽ xét theo từng cái ngân quỹ, từng cái ngân sách, từng cái mức budget một và chúng ta sẽ điều chỉnh uh, cái cái thiết kế theo những tiêu chuẩn chi tiết hơn. Dạ, thank you. Okay, um, so um, now we've created um, the uh, uh, the least cost design. We need to create a design event. So if you go ahead and click new, and then I'm going to rename that one um, 189 fire at J500. Um, so what that means is we're going to design the pipes based on a, um, a minimum fire flow of 189 um, litres a second at, at that junction. Uh, before we get to that bit though, we we'll, we'll go over to the, um, to the right hand side under the demand multiplier and I'm going to change that to 1.5 and um, the reason is um, because you can see here that it's average day, so we're going to um, 
multiply demands up so that instead of average day, it's a, uh, it, it's a much more, um, much closer to, to maximum day flows um, for, for our design. Yeah, okay. bản tin ở đây uh, thiết lập cái hệ số demand multiplier, tức là hệ số cho nhu cầu là 1.5. Lý do là bởi vì chúng ta, xuất phát điểm của chúng ta là chúng ta dựa trên kịch bản cho ngày trung bình. Hệ số 1.5 là để chỉ là cái lưu lượng cần thiết khi có hỏa hoạn tại nút J500 này là bằng 150% so với nhu cầu của ngày trung bình. Ok, thanks. Ok, so once you've done that, we can come down to the bottom area and the demand adjustments. And um, we just want one demand adjustment. Go ahead and click new. Um, for the design event, the node that we want is, um, of course, Junction 500. So select Junction 500. And as it says in the name, we want 189 liters a second um, at, at that particular node during this um, design event. Yeah, okay, we have. Okay, so now we need um, some pressure constraints. So over to the pressure constraints tab. And um, you can see here we can go new or we can um, initialize table selection set or you can select from drawing. We want the last one, select from drawing. And what I'm going to do is just zoom out and draw a box around the whole thing. So select every single node and then green tick. So you can see that the, the minimum and maximum here, that they're set to the default and it's 0 and 1378. The problem with 0 is um, we don't want the pressure to, to ever get um, anywhere near 0. So what we're going to do is firstly go to the override defaults and global edit and tick. And then the minimum pressure in KPA, again, we want to global edit that. Um, it's 1.30. So um, we don't want any any node in the entire model to, to go below 1.30 um, during the fire at at uh, J500. Okay, so just like um, with, with the groups in Darwin Calibrator, we also need groups in Darwin Designer. So um, <coughs> we need to go to the Design Groups tab. And um, create a new one, a new design group tab. And um, this is called internal. So um, for internal, um, just once you've created it, go to the element IDs. And um, uh, again, select from drawing. And if you zoom into Junction 500, we want Pipe 500, Pipe 501. And that's it. So just 5 and 501. And OK. So we need to do the same thing for West, North and South. So firstly, uh, uh, create another new one, rename it West. And then select from drawing, and, and this one is going to be uh, 600 and 601. North. So north is going to be 7, 701, 702. And then the last one will be south. Eight hundred, eight hundred one, 
Eight oh two. Three. Yeah, okay, to go. Okay, excellent. All right, so um, the groups are done. Now we need cost properties. So go over to the cost properties tab. And um, yeah, and we need um, new pipe, and then we'll, we'll take a design options group. Um, <clears throat> we want to rename that cost new. And we need to um, fill in the table here. So um, for diameter first. And um, the material is ductile iron. With a C factor of 130. Then you need to put in the unit, um, the dollars per meter um, costs. Just give you a minute to finish putting those in. Yeah. Done? Okay. Um, yeah, okay, to go. All right. Uh, so with cost new highlighted there, you want to go and duplicate and then change that to cost optional. So once you've created cost optional, add an extra line to it. And we want the diameter to be zero and the cost to be zero. So the other two you can you can fix up. But zero diameter, zero cost. And what that means is that um, you don't need to, in order to meet the um, the constraints, then don't bother to um, just leave it at zero and, and make it inactive, turn it off and, and obviously don't don't charge us any any money for it. So, um, if the pipe doesn't need to be um, installed, then we've got the option to um, to not have it built at all. Yeah. Hello. Uh, bạn Dean đang tạo thêm một cái nhóm chi phí mới. Nhóm này có tên là optional. Có nghĩa là tùy chọn. Ý của bạn là nếu trong thực tế cái phần mạng này không cần phải uh, tính đến cái những chi phí ở đây thì chúng ta có thể tắt cái này đi và chúng ta chỉ sử dụng một nhóm chi phí chính mà thôi. Dạ, yeah, thank you. Ok, được rồi. Ok. Uh, Alright, so uh, now that we've got our, our cost properties and um, all of that stuff, what we can do is um, go to the design type and make sure it's set to minimize cost, uh, which it is. So um, now what we can do is um, over on the, the left here from the least cost design, we want a new optimized design run. Okay. See that um, the design event is ticked on there. So that's, that's fine. And then... Um, the design groups, we need to tell it what properties um, to use. And so the first one for internal is cost new, and then the rest are optional. So what we're saying is um, we're, we need to build 500 and 501, but the rest of the pipes um, don't necessarily need to be need to be built. Okay. 
ันฮายดินคุณช่วยพลีสเอ็กซ์เพลนอันส์มอร์ทิมอ่ะว่าส์ออปชันอลและและที่จะเพิ่มเยอะใช่ไหมเราเรามีอยู่สองกลุ่มกลุ่มอินเทอร์เน็ตกลุ่มของไพร์ And we have three line of fess, north and south. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the first table, the the cost new table, has 150 to 400 mil um, diameter pipes, but there's no zero, which means that if you use if you use the group which is cost new, then it, you're telling the system that those pipes must be installed or designed. Um, whereas the cost optional has the option of zero diameter, zero cost, which means um, basically that means inactive. So it, it will turn the pipes off, and no no water will go through any of them. They'll be uh, it'll be like they they are they aren't there at all. So they they're not even going to be installed. Yeah. Okay. Dạ các anh chị nhìn thấy ở đây chúng ta có bốn nhóm, thì cái nhóm bắt buộc phải install tức là bắt buộc phải cài đặt là nhóm internal còn ba cái tuyến đường ống để dẫn nước đến khu vực mới của chúng ta có tên là west north south tức là ba hướng từ phía tây phía uh, nam và phía bắc thì ở đây bạn lại chọn là cost optional có nghĩa đây là chỉ là tùy chọn tùy vào tình hình thì chúng ta có thể bật hoặc là chúng ta có thể uh, tắt cái những cái uh, nhóm chi phí tùy chọn này. Okay, thank you. Okay, được rồi. Sure. So if you go to the options tab, um, see that we've got um, the 50,000 trials and three solutions to keep. So that that's fine. So we can now compute. So if you check the solutions. See the fitness here. So the fitness is, of course, the cost because this is a a least cost um, design run. So you can see the least cost here is 179,000. And if you check solution one, you see exactly what it's done. So you see the internal pipes that we we definitely need to design. They they've worked out at 250 mil, and then you can see the three north pipes here have been designed at at 200 mil. Um, adds up to 179,000. Okay, so what we can do is um, is take solution one here and export it. So export to scenario. So export scenario, uh, export alternative, uh, use scenario name, export physical alternative, export active topology to alternative. So we need to tick all of them on. Once you've done that, click OK, and we've now exported it. And now yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep your mind. Dạ, các anh, các chị nhìn thấy bạn đã chạy cái lần chạy tối ưu hóa đầu tiên. Chúng ta giữ lại ba kịch bản là solution one, two, and three. So sánh ở đây chúng ta thấy solution one là có giá trị tốt nhất. Chúng ta có thể nhìn thấy rất rõ ràng kể cả hệ số C của Hayson William cũng như đường kính của tường đường ống và chi phí. So sánh ba cái solution này thì bạn đi chọn solution 1 và chúng ta tức là giải pháp số 1 và chúng ta đang xuất nó ra thành kịch bản để đưa những dữ liệu này vào trong cái mô hình của mình. Dạ yeah, ok thưa cậu. Ok so now we can close it down and um, if you go to the scenarios you can see the um, the new optimized design run there. And, um, and what we're going to do is um, is we're going to go and create the same um, type of situation where um, that we just had. So if you make that current, you'll see the color coding update for the pipes. <laughs> so color coding is updated. Now we need to go and um, change the demands to be the same as what we use to design with. So to do that, we need to go to the alternatives and demand. And from base average daily, we're going to right click and say new child alternative, which I'm going to name 189 um, fire at J500.
Thank you. Um, now we've um, now we've got that. We can um, <coughs> go back to the scenario and open up new optimized design run one and select um, from the demand the one that we just created. 189 fire at junction 500. And then go back to the home tab and in the home tab you'll find the demand center and we want demand control center. So if you remember uh, we multiplied all the demands in the um, in the entire model by 1.5. So we're going to do the same thing here. So in demand base liters a second, I'm going to global edit that and multiply by 1.5. So once that's done, you can close. And we need, of course, to add the 189 liters a second to um, junction 500 so I'm just going to do that right here in the junction so I'm just going to open up properties see in the demand it has nothing in it at the moment you go to the ellipsis you can add in 189 Okay, now that that's done, and close it down, and um, click compute. And if you check the um, pressure at junction 500, you see that it um, <coughs> has a has a pressure here of 16.9 meters, so um, well above the the 130 kPa minimum. So that's for the um, the least cost, <coughs> but we may want um, uh, some more pressure here so um, to, to ramp it up from the, the 16 um, to, to get more pressure into into this new new area here at Junction 500. So Let's do that now. So let's go back to analysis, Darwin, Darwin designer. And what we're going to do is just change the design type here and then rerun it. So into the design type tab. And the objective here is going to be multi-objective trade-off. The available budget is 500,000. Okay, the benefit here is unitized and everything else is fine. So um, in order to run a multi-objective trade-off, you have to have at least one pressure benefit considered junction. And so... Um, back on the design events tab down the bottom in the pressure constraints and just scroll all the way to the bottom and the very bottom one you'll find there is the uh, um, the junction we're interested in junction 500 Okay, so tick tick the box. Consider pressure benefit. And um, that's that's all we need to do. So uh, <coughs> we can now um, go and um, and compute it. Um, so need to of course go to the design run and uh, compute okay 
you carry. And you'll find something interesting has happened here uh, regarding the uh, the solutions and how they're ranked as far as um, benefit. You can see that we had a budget of 500,000, so um, they all need to be below 500,000. You can see the, the pressure benefit here um, compared to the cost. So you can see that um, it's nearly $300,000 more expensive than the first one. But if we check the solution, you'll see that um, we've now upped the size of our pipes to 400 and 250, and we've also included the west pipes. So we, we still don't need to design the south, um, but you can see that um, we're, we've got significantly more money into larger pipes here um, in and around Junction 500. <coughs> so again, I'm going to go to export and tick all of them <coughs> and uh, click OK. And that should have um, created a second uh, scenario, optimized scenario for us. So uh, make that current, and you'll see, of course, the color coding updates again. And open that up and swap it over to the 189 fire at junction 500, and then compute. You see that um, when I open up Junction 500 here, um, now the the pressure has gone from 16 to 34. So we've doubled the pressure at that node. So it cost 460,000 instead of 180,000, um, all for for an extra um, 17 or 18 meters of pressure. Okay, um, that is that is the end of that workshop. Um, so as you can see, what once you uh, it, it's it's a lot easier to to run Darwin Designer than it is Darwin Calibrator, but they work the same way with the export and the design events and things like that with the groups. Um, <coughs> so uh, if you do have new pipes to design, Darwin Designer is a very good option because it, it's it's quite quick and simple to set up. Um, particularly if you're only designing, say, one new subdivision or something like that, um, you, you can also check it. So, uh, yeah, I, any questions regarding Darwin Designer? Dạ, thưa các anh chị, bạn Dean đã gần như hoàn tất cái bài thực hành thứ ba là sử dụng Darwin Designer. Bạn muốn nhấn mạnh rằng đây là một công cụ rất là mạnh mẽ và rất dễ thiết lập và nó đặc biệt hữu dụng khi chúng ta có một phần mới trong mạng uh, trong cái 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 mạng cấp nước trong cái hệ thống của chúng ta. Thì uh, sau khi xem xong phần demo của cái bài workshop Darwin Designer thì phía phía các anh chị có câu hỏi gì không ạ? Bên phía các anh chị, Savako có câu hỏi gì về Darwin Designer không ạ? Hi Dean, hello. Yes. We don't see we don't see any question on the Zalo chat. Uh, Zalo chat. Okay, great. Um, mm. So that that's um, that's the last workshop um, for today. Uh, so that's good. We made we made good time. Um, as far as tomorrow, uh, it'll be um, similar to today. So we'll, tomorrow we'll start with um, the water quality, um, and then there's uh, there's some skate as well, and and then. Um, Depending on the time, there's also uh, pump selection and scalibrator. Um, scalibrator is less relevant if you're not um, if you're not using hammer, so that's why we skipped that one today. But um, we, we can um, we can just see how the time goes tomorrow as far as um, we, which workshops we do and, and how many. So um, yeah, um, 
feel, feel free to ask any questions or um, bring questions tomorrow. And um, we'll, yeah, as I said, we'll we'll get um, we'll get started with water quality um, for first thing tomorrow. Thank yeah. thank you everybody for coming. And yeah. And